So, hey everybody, uh, CJ, I'm back, and this is probably the final episode of the Mac V1. But there were several things I didn't cover, and one of the reasons why I didn't cover was I was getting very, very low on time before the Peach State Stargaze started, so I wanted to make sure that I got that done. So there's a lot of things I didn't get, finish getting videoed, and there may have been some questions, so I just want to go over those. Um, we'll start with the uh, things I didn't cover, let's say the wiring. So I did not cover the 110 volt wiring for the shore power coming in. A couple of reasons behind this. Number one, I don't want to get sued. Uh, number two, there are plenty of videos out there on how, how to wire 110 power for a camper. The interior lighting, I basically kind of covered a little bit. I think I talked about it, but to be more specific, we have two interior lights that I had hooked up. One is a, a white light, which was simply just a dome light that I'd wired into the 12 volt system and then two red lights uh, for a nighttime. These were connected to this switch panel here. So there's your red lights with the little alien and then the cabin lights was for the white. There are two other empty slots which can be used. Um, I guess you could add in more lights or a fan or something along that nature. Now the 12 volt system uh, from the power is actually coming from this blue eddy and Basically, all I did was wired a cigarette lighter adapter into the back of the switches for the power supply. That just plugs in, and there you go. You have cabin lights. So, yeah, didn't cover that. Uh, it's just low voltage wiring, not particularly difficult. Uh, but this was to avoid having to put a bunch of batteries in here and all that other crap. Um, I wanted it simple, and this was the simplest way to do it. So part of that, too, is this is actually a Bodega, I believe that's how you pronounce it, uh, refrigerator cooler. It is AC powered, so you can run it off of AC, which it can connect on shore power to the, the wall socket that was installed back there for the AC. And it can also run on 12 volt. So while I was traveling, um, I had it connected into the larger Blue Eddy there which kept it powered during the whole drive out to the uh, Star Park. In addition, the TV got mounted, which I didn't show that, that is also on 110 power. Uh, finishing the countertops, I think I had started on the L-shaped one that was here for the uh, basically the main countertop that was going to be used for the cooking as well as the sink. And then a second one was installed, which I just showed you on the, uh, the lighting. But let's look at that one also. So this was also, I believe actually this one was done out of birch because they ran out of poplar and I was in a hurry, so it had to be done. So basically I just cut out the opening, left a little sill there to keep anything from getting fallen out which is where the Blue Eddy is stored, the larger Blue Eddy or the smaller one, depending on what you want to do. And then I put in uh, some guardrails just to keep things from sliding off while uh, it's in motion. Of course, the other side, I did the same thing. There's a railing all around the top here in the front and then another railing on the bottom just to keep things from falling out. I was going to do the cutout version like this over here, which would have made it look more uniform. Uh, again, though, I just ran out of time. So one of the questions that came up too was as far as like having a stove, what I was doing for a stove. And this was the solution, which is just a little one burner uh, butane stove, which can also be used uh, with propane. There's a little hose adapter for that. Um, and that just sat right there and I was able to cook off of it. I would just open up that window and it did just fine for all intents and purposes. And of course the finished sink is here and it literally just did that. 
there's no water hooked up to it as of right now but uh yeah that was still in there the water system how it was hooked up i think was a little unclear uh in fact let me detach the camera to better show this uh, basically there are two canisters one up here on the top and i'm sorry it's a little dark there's one down there on the bottom so the bottom one both of these are two and a half gallon the bottom one is actually the supply and we had a hose that i just pinched underneath there we go so that is the water supply which goes up under there to the uh, water pump and this just feeds down uh, through the cap into the lower one and it sucked up water just fine and then the sink is tied to this larger diameter i believe this is three five eighths this is five eighths tubing and it literally just falls down into the top one here so as water is getting sucked up there, whatever wastewater, gray water is going down into this tank, at which point you can just, you know, empty out almost anywhere. And then while the camber's in motion, these caps just fit over the top here just to keep water from spilling out. The uh, people were asking about storage, what kind of storage did I have? So there was a little bit of storage that's over here underneath this countertop. There's a lot more that's over here underneath uh, the kitchenette. And then I also did hanging baskets. There's two on this side and only one on that side above the kitchenette. Um, I have plenty of room to add more. I could actually add in another three or four down this side. Could obviously add another one into here, which would be three. And these were mounted to the one by threes that were put in. So if you remember on the video, I said the header piece ran lengthwise longer over the window. And this was the reason why. So there was something for the wire baskets to actually attach to. Um, is it enough storage? <laughs> uh, probably not. Um, but then again, based on the size of the camper, there wasn't going to be a whole lot of storage. The curtains, uh, so I didn't have a lot of time to get super involved on these curtains. Uh, basically, these are just, they're off Amazon. They have um, small uh, magnets, which are sewn into them. I just installed a couple of these button magnets on uh, the top corners and the bottom corners. And then these just simply just sticked. Well, if I can find that, there it is. They just stick <laughs> right to the magnet it's actually easier uh easier than what it looks like so they just snap on there and the only reasons for the blackout curtains was because if i was out at the star park i wanted to be able to um uh, darken it up in here in the event i had to use a white light or a brighter red light so that's the only reason why they were up there and why i had them um heating came up no i did not go with any kind of propane heater um yeah you could probably use a little buddy heater because i was plugged in to shore power i just used a little electric heater uh, the couch height so somebody pointed this out and honestly it's something that i did not um, think about in the very beginning and I've always, in the back of my mind, I was always thinking about some of the mini campers that go into the smaller pickup trucks. So like the Tacoma, uh, the Ranger, et cetera. Uh, the floor spacing underneath, there's usually a some sort of a platform that the camper sits on top of on, it, within the bed of the pickup truck. The reason behind that is because the uh, side walls of the tub are lower. And part of that reason is because and here i'll point this down is so that the uh any seating your feet are touching the ground so if i'm actually sitting on the sidewall with no cushions 
my feet touch the ground perfectly fine. However, while I'm elevated up on the couch, there is a little bit of, of uh, some height issues. Now, this really wasn't a big issue for me. Uh, half the time I had my feet up. Other times I was laying crossways of on the couch. So that wasn't that big of a deal. However, for some, I'm sure that it could be. The, I think initially I was thinking about doing a small platform, which uh, I'm still considering. And part of that platform is to raise the, the bottom of the uh, floor up to where your feet can rest comfortably on it and then have it as a slide out for the refrigerator to be mounted in. So it would all slide out as basically one big drawer and have the refrigerator locked in there. But I, I just ran out of time. As far as the comfort, it's very comfortable. Um, there's actually more space in here than what you give it credit for, especially when you think of it sitting in the bed of a pickup truck. If the walls you know, came up even with uh, the, the sidewalls of the tub, yeah, there'd be hardly anything. But the additional 32 inches uh, total, so the 16 inches on each side, that definitely opens it up. It allows for you know, the kitchenette, more storage, et cetera. I did not build a bathroom into it just because there's not enough space for that. And if I did, I think the weight would be considerably higher, though I probably could have uh, taken the extra size that's over here on the kitchenette, extended that out by another 24 inches so it would hang over the tailgate. I'm sure I could have put a bathroom in there. However, uh, if you really need a bathroom, you could always get one of the, you know, the little, uh, the little portable chemical toilets, or you could probably even do some sort of, uh, you know, one of the nat you know, nature's made toilet or nature's head or something like that. Comfort wise, it's certainly big enough, uh, with two people, it might be a little bit cramped, but for me and the dog, there was plenty of room. The comfort of the, the four inch pads. Uh, it was fine. It's fine for sitting. There doesn't seem to be any issue with that. Uh, however, for sleeping, I definitely would recommend some sort of a gel topper to go on top of it. The first night out, I slept with the gel topper. I was extremely comfortable. Uh, no issues, no back pain, nothing like that. The second night, I just wanted to see what would happen if I slept just on these. It was okay. It wasn't terrible. The only thing I saw a problem with, with is uh, the, the, the gap between where the two 24 inch pieces fit together. I didn't slide through it, but I could tell it was there. So any type of, of a mattress topper would probably be just fine for two people uh, or even just for a single person. So here's the biggest question I, I've been getting and probably something that everyone wants to answer. Now, I did cheat on one of the videos. Somebody asked me about the weight and I divulged it. If you didn't see that comment, um, then you, you don't know what it is. So the ultimate question is, what is the weight of this camper? So a couple of months ago, I was up at Greenleaf Recycling, dropping off a bunch of stuff. And I had a gross weight of 5580, and then my tear weight was 5520. So I basically had 60 pounds worth of stuff to get rid of. So right there, there's the 60 pounds. So it wound up being 5520. That's the dry weight of my truck with a full tank of gas and nothing else in the cab, which when I went to get it weighed again, uh, when it was time, I made sure that the fuel tank was full again and then got the tear weight. So, as you see, 5960. That is the total weight of the truck and the camper. So, if you take that 5960 and you minus out the tear weight after I weighed out 440 pounds. So, even I was completely surprised at the fact that it only weighs. 440 pounds. I went back just because I was like, there's no way that that could be correct. I was assuming somewhere around seven or 800 pounds. 
but uh, when I went and took the weights of the windows, the door, the two by fours in the back in the back wall here, plus the uh, wood for the cabinets and everything and averaged them together, I was actually under that, which makes sense because once you add the two inch foam, fiberglass, fiberglass resin, et cetera, et cetera, it brought it up pretty close to the calculations I did. So 440, uh, that's the true weight.